We were creative in Vienna. That's okay. But with a world wide scope. So, Vienna is some, I'm from Austria, so there actually has been there. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's good. Oh, yeah. So, it's a, a city really in the heart of Europe, really in the middle of it. And when, and when it's open and, and inviting others, um, then it's, it's, it's the strongest. And this is also what our field is about. So, this is what I've done, yes. Before we, we jump right in now, short primer. I will use words like machine learning, AI, data science, we, and we all have a picture in our head what that means. And there are different pictures, and none of these pictures are seen wrong. But the picture we have in our head are mostly like that. Thanks to Catherine for, for actually doing that. Well, I just discovered it's hers. Okay, I used it. <laughs> Got it on the internet. Um, so when, when we talk about AI, yeah, yeah, a large part of it is part of data science. Because we deeply believe data science is what engulfs all of these things. And there is one important thing later where I will talk to you about later on. Domain of business knowledge. This is actually what, in our opinion, the, the biggest trouble, one of the biggest troubles in the field. But more of that later on. So, let's jump right in. Let's start with some figures. We like numbers, isn't it? So, question here is, does machine learning AI deliver? And you may have heard of that. Yes, it's Gardner. They are doing a lot of numbers and figures. But I think that what it wants to tell us that's correct, because it basically is what we are seeing as well. 85% of AI and machine learning projects fail to deliver. Okay, quite a mouthful. 53% of projects make it from prototypes to production. So this is like, uh, you can say the glass is half empty or half full. So it maybe depends on your character. If that's positive or negative, you can say, well, come on, how do we make it? But 85% don't deliver, that's a high number. So let's say the majority of it. Of it. So why is, why is that? that? That's the question. So think about the, the questions you may have asked yourself before an AI project, or you jump right into something. And it were questions like that. Do I have enough data? Choose the right algorithm? Should I take tool, tool, tool A or tool B? Do we have the right skill set on our team? Or if there isn't a team, do I have the right skill set? Because And these are all valid questions. Don't get me wrong. It's really, that's, that's the basic. I mean, that's like, you should do that. Because it tackles these areas. It's quality, tool selection, algorithms, team skills. Yeah, cool. And the associated dangers are all very real. You can have uh, insufficient data, inappropriate tools, non-fitting algorithms and team skills are not really there. But the question is now, are these the biggest dangers to our field? And still, you remember, a lot of these projects don't deliver. So what's the biggest danger there? So in, in our opinion, it's none of them. It's high. The high surrounding nearly all we are doing. Okay? And it maybe it is like this lion staring you in the face and want, wanting to eat you. Maybe. So, hype, according to Wikipedia, 
is promotion consisting of accentuated claims. Sounds like marketing. And so don't get me wrong, marketing is it's okay, you need it if you're a company and so on. Hype is much more. So, again, Gartner. So who, who actually knows, uh, knows this graph, the hype cycle? So hype has an hype has a life cycle, it seems, and I think we have all experienced it. So some technology comes into the field, let's say deep learning. You can pick whatever you want to graph. And then it's a sharp rise, okay, up to the peak of, of inflated expectations. And I really have to say, all of these words here are super cool, the trough of disillusionment the slope of enlightenment and the plateau of productivity. I think it took quite a long, a long time to take up this right. Um, the whole point here is, I think we, we felt it somehow. And they go in, this sharp going down is in a lot of industries, companies, even, even countries, what what we feel. So let's look at some examples which you may have already heard in this life cycle. Singularity is near. Whatever that is, I don't know. Somehow like I don't know. Sometimes it's it's we're all gonna die or we're all gonna live in Paradise or something like that. Then the typical using tool A, and you can now put in uh, here, do uh, some quantum, sorry. Um, all our AI projects will succeed. All jobs will be done by machines. Ah, we often heard this, I think. And I will develop. So that's why it's P. Because then I met a lot of people, yes, that's bad, that's bad, but come on, that's cool for me. <laughs> and for sure, the last one you may have heard is the sexiest job of the 21st century. Oh, it's from DJ Petal from 2012, I think, in, in Harvard Business Review. Uh, who has heard of that or read the article? Okay, I'm getting old then. <laughs> so, but there is a, a second part, 10 years after that, where he actually thought about, okay, what, what will, what's going on in, in the field? It's pretty interesting read. It's out there in, uh, on the internet. And yes, for sure, this was one of the um, <laughs> biggest motivations we had to start doing a data science group, because, come on, who doesn't want to be sexy? We all want to be sexy. Okay. And now some examples of the valley before the trial of disillusionment. AI is only good for detecting cats or dogs or whatever your, your pet is. Our experts, and I heard that a lot, that I heard really a lot, always achieve better results. Always. There's no exception. Okay. The typical thing about passwords, and last but not least, all jobs will be done by machines, and I will lose mine. So, well. But don't get me wrong. It sounds now a bit like I want to trash the field and come on, we are just producing bullshit and let's go on. Let, I mean, let's stand up, go to the cafe, eat some cakes and say, let's call it a day because we've got all time. No. <laughs> no. We made awesome innovations during the last years. I mean, best example for me is autonomous driving. I mean, you all heard about Elon Musk, let's say, yeah, super drive, whatever. And then people just killing, 
seeing uh, themselves by driving into whatever. But I think a few weeks ago, there was a relatively small article that level three was approved in Germany, I think for Mercedes. So level, so who is a bit familiar with with autonomous driving and what level three means? One, two, few. So it basically means you can drive on the highway and this is fully legally allowed uh, with 130 kph without your hands on the steering wheel and you don't have to take care. You don't have to listen or you can read a book or whatever. I think it's 15 seconds that you have to actually regain control. So what you can do is just sit there, read a book, and if there's some signal ha happening, you look, okay, what's happening? And then you put your hands back on the steering wheel. And that's, in my opinion, a huge achievement. But it's not so sexy. It's not like, yeah, I just jump in and then jump out. No, it's not. But this cost billions, really billions to, to, to achieve that. And it will cost further billions to actually when go to the next level. <laughs> Going now more a bit into technical things, transformers, new type. And if you look at GPT-3 or whatever just comes to your mind, OK, that's big. Or things like, like data where you have then one thing for multiple purposes. That's really cool. I mean, it's really a good step forward. So I want that to happen, and I want much more cool, cool things to happen. But how to do that? If we are in this hype cycle and everybody is either thinking we will all be gods, Singularity is near, or some sentient being will come and rescue us, or we will all die, basically. Because before, this is fueled by fear. That's why I said in my, in my talk before, heightened fear. This is fueled by fear. People are afraid of basically that or whatever. The goal is here to smooth this curve, okay? Because basically nobody needs that. Needs that in sense of doing that. Because most of the people I know just want to do good projects. And yes, earn money and maybe be famous a bit, that's okay. But we need that to happen. Because what is the biggest danger? A lot of people in the field I'm, I'm talking with are like, okay, don't care. I mean, that's a natural uh, evolution. Okay, we are maybe here. Like, yeah, it will get a bit worse. Okay, but then there will be the slope of enlightenment, and then we can live on happily ever after. No, this is not natural because. There was something called an AI winter before. Who has heard about that? Again, few. So for the rest, that was, please correct me if I'm wrong, starting 90s, roughly middle of, of the zero years, uh, when basically the first hype went down and stayed down. So like, not like that, but it was like that, or me. So yes, research was going on. Joe Hinton, one of them. Joe Hinton was then hired in, I think, 2008 um, by Google, because they just said, ah, yeah, we are there now. They are doing a lot of research, but people are going to NIPS, NIPS conference, and just being on their own, no hype, which is somehow good. So, most the curve. This is actually what's important, because otherwise, I really fear that the next AI winter can happen. It's a really possible danger. 
So, how to do that? I mean, sounds like it's superficial, Gartner is doing that and it smooths the curve, okay. So, unfortunately there is not one measure to do it all, one fix, one magical fix. So like this magical AI does, we have to sprinkle on a lot of projects and say, that's AI now. Yeah. It's actually a bit more, not complicated, but maybe a bit more work. Maybe it's just boring, but let's see. It centers around three pillars. People, data and technology. This is what we all like and speak about. And process, which is often vastly overlooked. So let's start with the first people. And I think it's one of the most important ones. Or, no, it is the most important one. Let's talk about teams. Because data science, AI, whatever you want to call it, is a team sport. It's people working together. And you, and you will see what, what I mean with that. It's, and you see it in, in this picture, it's a different skill set which people possess and they have to work together very, very closely, interlinked. So, what is the skill set these teams should have? The content type. It consists of, first, hard skills. This is pretty straightforward. You heard some of them. Data engineering, I won't explain here. More and more data engineers coming and okay, they got the best wages at the moment. Data analy analytics or more hard modeling, this is what often is perceived as data science at the moment. Because data scientists are just doing models, isn't it? No, they aren't. Storytelling, communication, vastly underrated. What does it help to have the best model, the best algorithm, if you can't communicate it, if you can't visualize it? Again, these are all, all things I've read so often, and I've seen in reality not so often. And connected with this is this, yes, you need to visualize. You need to visualize for your customers. And your customers can, can be internal, can be external, whatever. And last but really not least, domain knowledge. You have to know in which industry you are in, what is going on there, and why. So if you're working for finance and in risk management, and you don't know how a loan is processed, and you're working with the data generated by this process, have fun. Because you will do something and then there will be a meeting and this meeting will end in, yeah, a lot of question marks. And I said last part of this, but I forgot one, which is getting more and more attention now. And I think that's really good. When I, when I write here DevOps, I mean, AI ops, ML ops, however you want to uh, you want to term it at the moment, because in my experience, when you have oh, what you have seen, the eighty five percent which don't deliver. When do they don't deliver? A lot of these projects don't deliver near the end. So yes, there is data and there is some and there is some models and there are some results and the results are presented and some people are saying, oh, that's cool. And then it's forgotten. Just, yeah, there's a drawer, put it in, close the drawer and that's, and that's it. So putting it into production, this is one of the biggest things to do at the moment. 
one of the biggest challenges. So, hard skills, quite a lot. But when I write hard skills, yes, there are also soft skills. And yes, they are needed. And after long years of, of working with teams, creating teams, leading teams in, in different companies, in different industries, in my opinion, it boils down to this. These teams should possess these four skills. And the first one sounds quite easy. You should be humble and respect your co-workers. You have to have an open mind that maybe there is another way, a simpler way of doing stuff. Because there is maybe an expert who actually did that for 20 years and did some cool stuff. But again, if, if you do that, that's a bit it. But then something happens. I don't know. Something doesn't work out. Data is cheap as always. Um, that's normal. So you have to be resilient to actually say, okay, the first thing, first way it didn't work. So let's try something else. Let's try something else. So you have to be flexible. So not, not just seeing your tunnel. So this helps for that. But again, if you have these, and you're still saying, ah, I don't care. I'm humble. I'm flexible. I'm resilient, but I don't care. Stay hungry to change something, to transform something, because what we do at the moment in companies is transforming them. We are threatening a lot of people often. You, did you remember the fear? And then because some people counteract with hype. Like, okay, now we will change the whole company, get rid of 80% of the people, and please love me for that. Won't happen. So, quite a lot of skills. That's why I said I still have a team score. So how do, I, uh, how do I acquire these? Well, you're sitting in a university, so obviously that's one of the ways. There's YouTube, there is all kind of stuff. Uh, so I can have a lecture about that. Won't do it. I will just concentrate on one. Leave your bubble. Because we are all living in one. We are living in a, in a bubble where hype is now rising. And if it's if you're in a company, if it's big, if it's small, it doesn't matter. There will be other people. Unless you are a one man company. Okay. But then maybe look yourself in the mirror. Maybe that helps. Inside your company, I think start with that. Become a data or AI ambassador. How that works, we have a good example here to today. Catherine is, do, uh, is doing that maybe, just wave. Catherine is doing that in her company, e-commerce. So if you have questions how that works out, here, hands on. And through that, build an internal uh, community. There will be other people who are working with data there. Maybe they don't have this formal education or whatever. Doesn't matter. Bring them in. They have vast experience, they know the data. Cool. And if that and if that all you have achieved, if that's all. It's cool. Then you may start in more formal way. In a lot of bigger companies I've worked with, they are starting that. They are calling it academy or hub or however you want to know. Or whatever you want to coin it. But the purpose is to educate the rest of the workforce. Which is good. They can have some YouTube videos. That's cool. But actually the other upside is, if you educate people, you talk to them, 
and you get a lot of business and use cases that way. So people are, are talking about their own problems, like, yeah, it's cool what you're doing, and three years ago I did that, and you get a picture. So that's inside your company. In real life, well, try a community like data center. Because it's the best way to keep sane. It's the best way to counteract the hype. With people telling you the plain truth. Like, I think that didn't work out. That's bullshit. That's a tool. We, okay, no. And so on and so forth. So people who don't I support the hype. Or, and you already did the first step, go to conferences like PyData. Because it's actually leaving your bubble, your company, your whatever. Talk with the people openly. Because otherwise you're just, yeah, pushing some, um, let's say, some sentences you already heard before, like singularities near. Maybe. Okay, so that's basically uh, about people. Let's have a short talk about data and technology. I could have filled the entire talk, the entire day, and the next half a year about that. So because it's vast. And one of the best talks I hear during the last Years was yesterday from Ashad. Don't know who, who has been there, Ashad. It was cool, so enthusiastic, so really deep into it. So, partially recommend to to watch it if you haven't been there. So, but that's too vast. So I want to just concentrate on some principles. which you can remember afterwards. So, let's start with the question. Um, sometimes you, you go into a new field or a new company or whatever, and some things are existing there, like, I don't know, some um, data pipeline somehow, or some algorithm running somewhere, or whatever. And then um, this company says, now we want to do the big, the big bang. Now we want to do, build a data platform. And then people, and yes, I also did that, start Googling, okay, wow, well, how to do that? And they end up at something like that often. And it's cool. I mean, uh, um, the, the guy actually writing about this, yeah, he <coughs> seems to know what, what he's talking about. And people are taking that, and then we have to implement it on the cloud. OK. But the question is, does it fit your, your need? Does one size fit all? Should we do that in every company, in every country? Or what should you think about first? Think about what you need. Not, not download some, some blueprint from, from the internet. Think about what you need. And here I, I borrow from, from our handbook and from Sholten in, in particular who, who did that and I really like this, this pyramid. I really like it. Who, who knows um, Maslow's pyramid of needs? Okay, that's fine. That's the pyramid of data needs. And it's the same. Start basic. Data collection. If you don't have data, collect something. Yeah, very surprising. Cleanse it, integrate it, or where is it need? And if you have done that, you can start humble and see, do some business intelligence, some exploratory data analysis, whatever. And then you can, you can think about that call it AI, machine learning, whatever you like. For the most, start here. So they got it a bit upside down, because they are, they are discovering then, oh, we don't have that much data. Damn. 
So think about your needs first. And if you have the needs, that's cool, by the way, there are still some basic requirements for a platform. Really simple stuff. Should be reliable. And I kinda got five minutes then. <laughs> it should be maintainable. It should be scalable. And scalability is a good bridge here. Because always remember this principles. You ain't gonna need it. If you think about that's a cool technology to do, maybe I need it. No. You ain't gonna need it. And second, keep it simple. The rest you can make. So, principles, requirements, needs. This is important when, when you think about a data platform or technology or whatever you're doing. You're doing. Okay, last pillar, process. I have to be a bit faster now, but maybe I can have a, bit, a few extra minutes because I started late. So process. I talked about Big Bang. And especially the, the larger companies I work for are all in for the Big Bang. Because we need plans. We want to do plans for a long time. And after we are planning for one year, we are implementing it. And after three years, we don't remember why we did it. But it's cool. So are there alternatives to that? Yes, there are. So one of the things we should start with are like such projects. Yes, it's just normal projects, but you it's good to call them righteous projects, and I come to that. What should they do? Yeah, they show should they should show the capabilities. That's pretty straightforward. But again, keep it simple. So, best thing is, I want to do a neural network, and we just talked talk yesterday. Um, maybe it's just a logistic regression, which is doing the job. But again, you show some added value. It shows the pitfalls during the project. So, again, plan a bit. I'm not saying start immediately, plan a bit. But not our don't wait until all the pitfalls are yeah, done for and dealt with, because you will wait forever. In a bigger company, it should be interdepartmental. Again, leave your bubble. Talk with other people. IT, business units, controlling, marketing. Go out there. And it should have a sizable potential impact. Sizable, so not I, I will rescue the company, but it should be sizable for this type of company you're in. So, you have a project, so what is the process? How to do it? And I just borrow from Casey Kosciukov, chief decision scientist, Google, I really recommend her talks, blogs, whatever, who, who has heard of her? Casey? I'm not that much, you really listen to her. One of her main points, and she, she is doing vastly much good points, is where to start. Often companies start here. What data do we have? It's okay. But most of the companies I work for and I know don't care about that. They care about that. They care about, to have this uh, uh, analogy, what do we want to eat? And not do oil if we have tomatoes. So they care about, oh, I like pizza, I like predictions, I like AI products, dishes. So start there. Not start with algorithms. So like, do we need a flamethrower or an oven? I don't know. What do you want to serve? If you want to serve pizza, then a flamethrower might not be the best. Maybe it works out for you, but it might not be the best. 
and models. Recipe for pizza or whatever you like, Lamash. So start with the dishes and ask them, what, what do you want to eat? So to be more specific here, I will just skip over that uh, a bit. Yes, the AI project should start with the business decision maker. You should ask him or her, what do you want to eat? A good way of doing that is start with a simple document answering some simple questions. What does it mean to do your task correctly? What are you doing? Fraud? Selling something? I don't know. Which mistakes, which, which mistakes are worse than other mistakes? What is okay and what is really bad? And how do you grade that? How do you give that a score? If you're doing good work, bad work, whatever. And if this is hard, back again, educate. However you want, be an internal evangelist, start an academy, whatever. So, that, that was a wild rise through the, through the three pillars. Now let's, I want to show you what eats most of my daytime during my day job. And if I'm doing what I'm talking about or just preaching to you and doing something a bit different. So, Generali actually has this type of, of organization. It's decentralized, it has a strong community, I care about that. And it has a strong interdepartmental, interdepartmental, that was always the hardest word to be honest, um, cooperation on specific projects. So quite shortly, so the experts are sitting here in CRM, in operations and claims, the, the AI coordination you see here, and IT is pretty straightforward. So when you have this type of organization, you still need a help. You can call it data science lab, center of excellence, whatever. But what they are doing is this, the largest projects I just talked about. Because yes, um, again, it's important. And I would recommend doing it in an agile way. So a lot of people here may ask, may say, is there another way? Yes, there are. but. Agile is fitting. Infrastructure, uh, we'll just skip over that. One important point here. There are still a lot of industries out there, so be flexible, be pragmatic, who say cloud, that's nice. But hard, we don't want that, and so on and so forth. So keep in mind, there is still a lot of companies out there who say, can you do that on premise? Can you do that on our servers? So that's, that's important. And I see a few question marks in the, in the faces here. So it's basically like, no, it's not a one, size, a one size fits all for the data platform. You have to deal with IT then and ask them, do you have a server? So what is a server? Important. So just shortly, what are we doing at the moment? At the moment, we are, our main project is about fraud. It's a huge um, business case in, in, in insurance, so since decades. So people are doing that for a long, long time, speaking about speaking to the business experts. What is fraud? Any misleading action which resulted in a benefit for them or others. So if you bump into, into a car and you are insured, well, there are possible ways of being fraudulent there. You never bumped into that car. You bumped into it, but you said, my whole car was destroyed. Okay. So what are we doing? Um, most important thing is more or less that. Because what you do there, you have a vast, vast community of experts, and you have to support them, more or less. 
what are the tools, just getting a bit technical. Um, at the moment, rule engines. And yes, you will deal with a lot of rule engines if you are in the field. Some experts say this is the rule. Supervised unsupervised. So basically everything you dream about, and that's cool. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff there with all types of data. What we are focusing on at the moment is this, because our data quantity and quality seems good enough. We are roughly two months in, so hopefully during the next part data, I can present you some very cool results. What we did with this very, very big numbers we have saved. Let's see. I gave you examples. Um, what are examples for, for fraud? Scope of this project, and this is also important about the sizable potential impact, car, home, and health. So basically, everything, which is cool, but also quite challenging. And I won't lie to you, for sure, there are challenges and threats to this project, as always. So people, you have to really talk to people, what is the scope? What is most important? All the time, one to one time. The expectations are too high, speaking about hype, because there are people from, uh, from, from business saying, oh, come on, I read in, pick a, pick a newspaper that you will save the world. Uh, no, we won't save the world. And for sure, collaboration falls short. Because yes, you can do all, all you want. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but it's something you have to be aware of. So, if that was not enough, and you're still interested in all these topics, we actually wrote a book about that. We're in a data science group, one of the, one of our biggest projects for the last one and a half years. You, if you plan on writing a book, it takes time. Serious amounts of time. So, just be warned because we were maybe a bit naive there. Um, and we were a bit megalomanic, maybe, and said, let's write a book about everything. I think it somehow worked out, but just by having certain authors who are part of this. And this is important because you see it's only possible by the power of a very diverse community. There is not one guy who can do that. At least I haven't met him. Maybe he's in the audience or go, oh, sorry. Um, so please so please speak to me afterwards. I would really like to meet you. Um, it covers a wide range. You can read all that on, on, on Amazon, so I won't uh, recite that. Thanks to, unfortunately, Armin is not here. Thanks to Armin um, writing the foreword here. So there's also a connection to here to the AOA. And this is the last slide, I promise. But there are four key takeaways. Normally, this is the slide where I tell you, go on and everything is cool, and we will save the world. Maybe. But to do that, first, there is an old song from Public Enemy, don't believe the hype. Because it's the first thing you can do. Just don't fall for it. Don't believe it. Second, concentrate on serving awesome dishes. So basically, you want to serve dishes. You want to do predictions, AI products. Be pragmatic and handsome. Don't overthink. Don't focus on, on some tool or some method because you know it or it sounds cool or whatever. And last but not least, join communities because they are the best way of keeping you sane. And I'm not seeing Manana. No, I'm not seeing her. She, she started something similar here in but, uh, but I see, so you can uh, make the connection. Mm -hmm. There is Data Point Armenia, very similar to, to Data Science Group in, in Vienna. Connect, third row to the left. <laughs> <laughs> what is the idea there? 
Monica, sorry. And that's basically it. Thank you for, for having the time and patience. And I'm open for questions. Thank you. Are there members of Vienna Data Science Group? Oh. Sorry. Um, Vienna, Vienna is in, in, the, in the middle of Europe, so there is always this, this strong drive, especially from Central and, and Eastern Europe, to, to concentrate there. So Hungary, uh, Czech Republic, but also Germany, I mean, that's quite near, clear. We also have a, a member in, in Paris. So quite dispersed around Central and, and, and Eastern Europe. Armenia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, and for sure Armenia. Wow, the authors of the book. That was so clear that it yes. didn't even mention it. Sorry. Of course, so self-explanatory. You talked about hype cycle and that a lot of people and companies fall for the hype cycle. So in your experience, here are a lot of people who work in companies and in startups. What are the typical signs that someone or some company fail for a hype cycle in your opinion? Thanks for that. Well, first time I, uh, I talked about a bit. Um, they are concentrating on, mostly on technologies. For just saying we need especially that because then we will be compliant with CI. And then you feel it a bit um, when you talk to, I don't know, managers, decision makers there, where, and they have business cases with very large dollar values behind it. Very, very large. And they say, it's cool that you think that, but maybe that's a bit too optimistic. And they are, maybe last but not least, they are just citing one or two articles <laughs> they read maybe the day before. So there are mm, various signs on different parts. So, yeah. Does it answer the question? Yeah. So everybody's thinking about going to coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Questions can come at the coffee. Break huh? as well. Questions can come during yeah, yeah. coffee break as well. <laughs> come on, just just approach me afterwards. Uh, uh, thank you for the beautiful, beautiful presentation. Uh, what do you think about uh, next five years uh, development in industry in terms of uh, the recent uh, technologies updates and uh, platform improvements? Like for example, for yesterday uh, we heard several. Uh, Good reports about uh, AutoML development and about, uh, AutoML developments and AutoML uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, AutoML. Uh, so this could also change uh, the field and uh, the processes in industry. I think because you just need uh, don't need to waste your time in uh, data processing to get the baseline uh, results for different resources. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so you're talking about AutoML. Uh -huh. It, it's uh, one of the examples of some huge changes. Let's, let's take AutoML. So let's say that really works out. In the whole process of doing, uh, of doing what we're doing, building data products, it's one step. So maybe it works out. And I know people on both sides who are saying this, this is full in and it will happen 100%, that we don't need models anymore. And there are others who say, come on, that's just for script keys. Um, but even if it works, it's just one part. And when uh, you have seen this pyramid of needs, data needs, what takes the longest time in your project? The longest time in your, in your project is digging through the data. It's at least 80%. And I haven't seen somebody really automatizing that for many use cases. 
So, technology-wise, this, this, this may be one of, one of the things. But again, I have the feeling that um, technology will be one important part, but it may not be the deciding part if we enter another winter. Because use cases are failing often not because of technology. So it may not be in a lot of use cases the deciding factor. I'm not saying it's not important, don't make me wrong. It, it, it is important. So you have to do that right. But often projects are failing because of other reasons. Does it answer the question? Yeah. Okay. 